Good afternoon. Uh, we welcome you to the Adult School of Ministry class for Sunday, April the 19th, 2020. <clears throat> Today our lesson is the last lesson on the visions of the, from the book of Daniel. And we'll be talking about uh, the lesson today is the end times prophetic panorama. And uh, this lesson will, will kind of review some of the historical events that have been covered already in visions that Daniel had. But more specifically in this particular lesson today, we will actually see uh, more detailed impact on the, uh, the Jewish people and their nation between a particular time frame. Uh, leading up to the, the time of Christ and the birth of Christ. So uh, we, we, uh, if you have your Bibles, and you can go ahead and start turning. Uh, we're going to look at Daniel's chapter 10, 11, and 12. So we're going to cover a lot of verses. We won't be able to read everything today, take too much time, but uh, we will go through the content of the lesson. And uh, I think what, what we, we look at and, and really need to grasp from this lesson today is the subtitle. And that through faith in Christ, we as believers can stand courageously for him in perilous times. And uh, we, we have these perilous times. Uh, we're living in them right now. And so this lesson, I think, is very applicable to where we are today. Well, before we do that, let, let me just remind you of a couple of things. One, uh, we, we do have drive-through prayer on Wednesday nights from 530 to 7. Um, we, we've had uh, four or five vehicles that come through the last two weeks. We had one uh, person gave their heart to the Lord last week. And then uh, last night, uh, we, we didn't have as many come through, but those that did come through uh, really received a blessing in prayer and communication and, uh, uh, and just uh, a good time of prayer, but, but just a time of encouragement for those that are going through some perilous times right now. Lost Amen. jobs, lost income, Amen. Uh, fearful, and left encouraged by the Holy Spirit. So remember drive-in prayer uh, on Wednesday nights. Also, we're going to have drive-in church this Sunday. Uh, we had a wonderful time in uh, 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 this last Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, with two services. We had um, uh, a, a powerful sermon Amen. from Pastor Evenson. Uh, we also had uh, uh, over a thousand people viewing both services Hallelujah. online, and we had almost 500 in the parking lot between the two services. So <laughs> it, it was it was a great weekend. So this Sunday is at 10 a.m. Drive-in church here in the parking lot, and. Um, uh, so be prepared for that. Just remember, we're not going to keep you long from 10 to about 11. Uh, but uh, the bathrooms are not available, so come prepared for that. And uh, we're excited. We hope to see you. We miss you. I, 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 um, Amen. I, I Amen. sent an email to all of you uh, last night. Uh, those of you that I have emails on, I had uh, 75 names on the email. And uh, only five of you... Uh, your emails bounce back. So that's five of you. I'll reach out to you personally uh, and then get your new email address and uh, add you back to the list. So uh, be looking for those updates for me. Uh, Becky and I love you, and we miss being with you in class. Uh, if you're in the Wednesday night Bible study, we miss you so much. We miss you terribly. And we uh, miss you too, Mr. Rush. Well, we, we, thankfully, Dad's my audience today, so he's <laughs> giving me feedback, and you, you can tell that. Uh, but uh, So we're definitely under the number 10 in the classroom, but uh, uh, we're having fun doing this. Amen. But at the same time, I sure miss you and can't wait for us to be together again uh, in the study of the Lord. Uh, his word. Uh, I miss your comments. I miss your feedback. And so uh, I, I pray that these lessons are a blessing to you. So as we, we mentioned prayer, let's pray and ask the Lord's blessing on his word. Father, we thank you for this opportunity for us to come together again by way of recording. We ask, Lord, that you would bless your word, Daniel's chapter 10, 11, and 12. May your word come forth today. Lord, it's not just historical information. But it is encouragement, Father Lord, that when Daniel received this, these things were in, uh, going to take place after his life was over, past his time of living. 
And so it was predictive prophecy, but at the same time, we're looking at it back as fulfilled prophecy. We've yeah. seen these things come to pass. Mm. Many of the things we talk about today, Lord, we know match secular historical records. Yes. And yes. the historical records back up the Word of God. Amen. So we thank Amen. you, Father Lord, for this Word today. Yes. And Lord, we pray, God, that you would give us insight to your Word. Help us, Lord Jesus, to know that, to understand it. We pray for those that are watching today. We pray, Lord, that you would meet their needs. Provision, Father Lord, miraculously. Father Lord, provide for them. Meet their needs financially, physically, emotionally. I pray, Father Lord, that you would bless them. And Father Lord, that during this time, they may grow closer and closer yes. to you. Yes, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. As I mentioned, this lesson uh, will mention some of the historical information and events that we've talked about in prior lessons. Uh, but in reading Daniel chapter 10, 11, and 12, uh, it's very important to note that how the Jews' lives and the history are affected and were affected by uh, other foreign kingdoms. And so these chapters kind of dig in a little bit deeper into some of the things that we've mentioned briefly uh, in prior lessons. Specifically, what we're going to see in this lesson today is the wars that are between the Seleucid kingdom and the Ptolemaic kingdom. The Seleucid would be the Syrian uh, kingdom and the Ptolemaic would be the Egyptian kingdom. And both of these are kingdoms that came out of the uh, ancient Greek empire under Alexander the Great. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. But what we see is the wars between the North and the South kingdom the Seleucid or Syrian and the Egyptian kingdom, we're going to see that Jerusalem and Israel is right in between the two kingdoms. Mm -hmm. So if you look geographically, you've got Syria to the north, you've got Egypt to the south, and Palestine, Israel is the land bridge between the two. So if one is going to attack the other, they have to go through Israel. And mm -hmm. so we see that it is... Uh, uh, direct consequences uh, for the post-captivity Jews. So what, what God is revealing to Daniel is events that are going to affect Daniel and his people in the future. Yeah. Not in his lifetime, but in the future. Okay? And so uh, we see that this lesson, is, it, it is, I mentioned, it's predictive prophecy at the time it was given to Daniel and when Daniel wrote it. But now we look back on it and see that it has been fulfilled. So what this really tells us is that God fights for his people. Amen. And that he will work for their good despite those that are fighting for evil and doing evil things. Amen. So we, we, we would do well as Christians to remember that God is on our side. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, I need to point out something to you chronologically. Daniel chapter 10 is actually dated in the third year of King Cyrus. If you go to chapter 11 and look at verse 1, chapter 11 is dated in the first year of Darius the Mede. We know that Darius came as the, the general under King Cyrus. So we actually see that Daniel chapter 10 occurs after Daniel chapter 11, but it's written first, okay? So, so don't be confused by that. Just know that, that the, the 10th chapter is referencing a, a events in 533 B.C. When, when chapter 11 is dealing with events about six years prior to that uh, in 539 to 538 B.C. So chapter 10 is dated later than the chapters 11 and 12. Right? And we're going to see that in the content, we're going to see in chapter 10, first part of chapter 10 is Daniel's vision. And then chapter 10, 20 through 11:35, we're going to see where he talks about the Persian and the Greek empires and Antiochus Epiphanes. Uh, and uh, he is the Seleucid Syrian ruler who persecuted the Jews very cruelly. And then uh, the latter part of chapter 11 we're going to see where many people believe it's referencing the future Antichrist. And then chapter 12 is talking about the events at the end of the age or near the end of time. So if you have your Bibles, let's look at Daniel chapter 10. 
And let me just read verse 1. In the third year of the reign of King Cyrus of Persia, Daniel, also known as Belteshazzar, had another vision. He understood that the vision concerned events certain to happen in the future, times of war and great hardship. Look at verse 2. When this vision came to me, I, Daniel, had been in mourning for three whole weeks. All that time I had eaten no rich food, no meat or wine crossed my lips, and I used no fragrant lotions until those three weeks had passed. So he basically went on what we know as a Daniel fast. Right. All right? He, he didn't eat rich food. He didn't eat pleasant food necessarily. He didn't eat meat. He didn't drink wine. And to, let's just be plump, blunt. Why would you use fragrant lotions? It would be? Bodily odor. Body odor. So he right. didn't use the odor for three weeks. Okay? Uh. He's in mourning. Okay? And he's fasting. But notice that, that Daniel had great, great concern for his people, the Jews. And so he mourned, he fasted, and he prayed on their behalf, and he'd done it for three weeks according to verses 2 and 3. During that time, at the end of the third week of fasting and praying, Daniel had a vision of a man standing by the Tigris River. Right? So this tells us geographically where Daniel is located. Right. Right? Now, it's apparent that the man... In Daniel's vision is more than just a man. Okay, in verses four through nine, we see that that uh, most scholars believe that this is the angel Gabriel that appears to Daniel. Now, this man was not just visible was not visible to the other men around Daniel. If you read those verses, you'll see that he says, "I saw the vision." But those who were around me could not see the vision, but they heard the voice. Right. And they were frightened, and they ran away uh, in fear. They were stricken with terror, they ran away. And that left Daniel alone, according to verse 7 and 8. I alone, only I, Daniel, saw this vision. The men with me saw nothing, but they were suddenly terrified and ran to hide. So I was there all alone to see this amazing vision. Notice the effect of the vision upon his physical person. Daniel is so overwhelmed by what he has shown that he fell to the ground in a trance-like state. The King James says that he was in a deep sleep. Let me read it in verse uh, 9 and 10. Uh, so I was left alone all alone to see this vision. My strength left me. My face grew deathly pale, and I felt very weak. Then I heard the man speak, and when I heard the sound of his voice, I fainted, that would be the trance-like state, and lay there with my face to the ground. So we see that, that, that Daniel falls to his knees, his hands, he's unable to stand. We see that, that his, his strength is gone. This is so overwhelming. I, to me, that tells me not necessarily anything negative, but it just tells me the state of our physical being in our carnal state as men, sinful men, before the Almighty God and his emissaries. Another thing, too, Mr. Rush, is that in, in verses 5 and 6, uh, also the, the, the actual appearance yeah. uh, that he received right. in verses 5 and right. 6 also could have overwhelmed him because yeah. it was so beautiful. So beautiful and so brilliant. Uh, because it says his body's like a precious gem, his face flashed like lightning, his eyes flamed like torches, his arms and feet shone like Paul's brass, his voice roared like a vast multitude of people. That almost sounds like a description of Christ in the book of Revelation. Yes. All right? However, most believe it's not Christ, but that it is Gabriel, one of the, the, the angels of God. Uh, now, notice that... that uh, uh, Daniel, the messenger, then reaches out, touches Daniel, raises Daniel to his hands and knees, and that enables him to stand up. Now, he's there, but he's still weak, he's still trembling, yeah. but the angel helps him up. But notice in verse 10 and 11, Just then a hand touched me and lifted me, still trembling to my hands and knees, and the man said to me, Daniel, listen to this, folks, listen to this. This applies to us. If, we are a if you are a child of God today, listen to this. Daniel, lost my place, sorry. Daniel, you are very precious to God. So listen carefully to what I have to say to you. Stand up, for I have been sent to you. 
When he said this to me, I stood up, still trembling. Mm. Notice what he said next. Then he said, don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in Hallelujah. heaven. Hallelujah. I have come to answer to in answer to your prayer. All right. So when we look at this, we see that Daniel it was weakened by this in his carnal flesh. He he just couldn't stand in the presence of God mm -hmm. and his Amen. emissary, his his messenger. Amen. Now, in, in chapter 12, I mean, chapter uh, 10, verse 12, down through 11, verse 1, the messenger of the Lord to Daniel provided him information about what had been happening in the spirit realm for the pr three previous weeks. Right. For the 21 days that Daniel had been praying, seeking God for understanding and humbling himself before the Lord, we see that, that he said... As soon as you started praying, the, your prayer was heard. Okay, mm -hmm. Notice that. Look at verse 12. Then he said, don't be afraid. Since you first the first day began praying for understanding, your request has been heard. I have come in an answer. But for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia mm -hmm. blocked my way. Right. Okay. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me. Now, this is not Daniel talking. This is Gabriel talking. So Michael, the archangel, has to come to help get Dan, uh, Gabriel overcome the prince of Persia. Okay? All right? So we're, we're seeing a battle in the spirit realm. Yes. Okay? Yes. All right? So notice then uh, he comes and I... And notice what he says. I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now I am here... So while Michael handles that battle, <laughs> I'm here to deliver a message to you. Hallelujah. Okay? Now I'm here to explain what will happen to your people in the future, for this vision concerns a time yet to come. So we see that in the spirit realm, Daniel has been fasting and praying for three weeks, and we see that his prayer was heard the very first day he offered his prayer. Mr. Rush, could this also possibly represent today as the king of Persia, you know, uh, representing Satan or, or yes. signifying yes. the work of the enemy. The, the kingdom of darkness. Kingdom of darkness. Could that also be one of the reasons, perhaps, why we might not get a prayer answered Most immediately? Definitely. Most definitely. Okay. And we're, okay. Going, we're going to hit that point in just a second. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so it, 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 is, it is directly applicable to where we are today. Yes. Um... The man said, that the messenger said that Daniel's prayer was heard, and he had come in answer to that prayer, but his, his, his arrival had been delayed because his battle with the prince of Persia. In other words, the dark prince yes. of Persia. Okay? Yes. So, so that tells us that there, there is spiritual warfare going on. Right? There's always war in the heavenlies. Okay? Because Satan is always after... God and his people. And to hinder his people. To hinder them. And so we see that the, uh, he was not able to free himself, Gabriel was not able to free himself from the battle until the angel Michael came to help him. Wow. Right? So he then gave Daniel the understanding of what would befall or what would happen to the Jews uh, in latter days. In other words, in, in verse 14, chapter 10, what would happen in the future to him. Now, Bible scholars generally accept that these verses are describing a, a spiritual realm uh, battle between Gabriel and the evil angel representing uh, the kingdom of Persia, as we just said. Notice that Gabriel was not able to gain the victory over this in evil angel until Gabriel came to help him, freeing him to take Daniel to Daniel the answer. When he got there again, what was the response by Daniel? He was overwhelmed by the revelation being made known to him. He fell down on the ground and could not speak, verse 15. Okay, So while he's speaking to me, I looked down at the ground, unable to say a word. Daniel could not speak. Right. So the man then touched Daniel's lips, the messenger, touched Gabriel, touches his lips, and he was made able to speak, but only to say that his strength was gone. That was all he could say. Only that his strength was gone. So in response to Daniel, 
Uh, the messenger strengthened him, assured him of God's love for him, told him not to be afraid, spoke peace to him, and strengthened him. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, these two verses we got to read. Okay, So look at verse 18. Then the one who looked like a man touched me again, and I felt my strength returning. Don't be afraid, he said, for you are very precious to God. Peace. Be encouraged. Be strong. That's what we say to you. That's what the Holy Spirit's saying to you today. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You are very precious to God. Peace be to you. Be encouraged and be strong. Now notice what Daniel says in the verse. As these words were spoken to me, I suddenly felt stronger and said to him, Please speak to me, my Lord, for you have strengthened me. Even in the midst of this corona virus yes. pandemic, Amen. Amen. we can still be strengthened Amen. Amen. and hear the voice of God. And not be afraid. And not be afraid. Amen. Amen. So we see that, that in, uh, he strengthened. And after this, uh, he said that he had come uh, to show Daniel uh, what was uh, going to happen in the future and that he needed to return to go back to help Michael in that continuing spiritual battle between the Prince of Persia and, he said in verse 20, after the Prince of Persia, the Prince of Greece, the evil Prince of Greece is going to rise. Because, and that flows, folks, in the lessons we've already talked about. Remember, who defeats the Persian Empire? The Greeks, the Alexander the Great and the Greek right. Empire. Right. So we see that as, as one kingdom goes down, another kingdom comes up, and we see that there are there these are secular kingdoms. Yes. They don't know God, right. and they worship right. idols, and they're sinful in nature, and they have they are represented by the evil princes of those areas. Amen. So the book of Daniel is very, very much about the sovereignty of God. Hallelujah. When we think about that, that means that God is sovereign. It really simply means that he is supreme in power and supreme in authority over all things. And he can bring to, to pass what he wills in human history. Okay? And, and, and he will bring it to the conclusion he wills it to be. This is how then that the books of Daniel and Revelation tie together. Exactly. And, and, and written hundreds of years apart. Yes. Hundreds of years apart. So as believers in Christ, living in this last age before Christ comes again, what do you think we've got to do? We've got to be like Daniel. Daniel yes. was spiritually yes. alert. Yes. How, how else? Good point. How else would he know to fast? Amen. How else would he know to pray? Okay. How else would he know to mourn? He was alert to the times around him. Yeah. And because of that, uh, we need to do the same. We need to do the same. We need to be spiritually alert. We need to pray. We, never, we need to not forget that God's kingdom will come. Hallelujah. It may appear as if it is not, but it will come. Amen. He spoke it. His will will be accomplished. Yes. His will will be done. Now, in Daniel chapter 2, verses uh, uh, 2 through verse 35 we see that we talk about the kings of the south and kings of the north. Now, this message of the man presumed to be Gabriel, as we already said, gives Daniel, he gives him an additional understanding of the scripture or the visions that he had already given him uh, in prior chapters in the book of Daniel. Now, these prophecies and these verses foretold events that would have very profound effect upon the post-captivity Jews. In other words, remember, Daniel is still in captivity. Yes. They have not yet been freed, but we see Cyrus will let them go, and they make the several returns back to Israel and uh, uh, back to Jerusalem and Judea, right? But these events in this chapter gives greater detail to that and what's going to occur to them. And we're going to see that the post-captivity this period of history covers 530 B.C. to 142 B.C. So several hundred years are these, uh, these uh, events are going to take place. Wow. Now, we need to keep in mind that these events that are being foretold happen after Daniel's lifetime. So it's prophetic in the sense that it's predictive, but we're looking back at it as yes. fulfilled. Yes. Okay? Yes. All right. So that's important to know that. Now, Amen. the prophecy that De uh, Gabriel gave to Daniel here in this chapter 
is about a succession of Persian rulers okay. from 536 to 480 BC. Then, after that, it's foretold of the Greek Empire that follows them, the Greek Empire of Alexander the Great. But we also know from a prior vision, but he gives us more detail now, is that Alexander the Great, in the prime of his height, yes. the prime of his uh, uh, kingdom and his rulership over that uh, kingdom, we see that he dies. His kingdom is not given to his descendants. He doesn't have any. He's right. a young man. Right. Okay? He doesn't have any. And so his kingdom is divided. The Greek Empire is divided between four of his top four generals. Right. Okay? Right. All right? Now, that makes four kingdoms from one okay. kingdom. Okay. Okay? And that's what's talked about in verses 3 and 4. So after this, there would be a continuing war between two of those kingdoms, the north and the southern kingdoms. So the Ptolemaic kingdom of, the, of Egypt, now remember, they're both Greek. They're, they were generals, okay? All right. So the Ptolemaic kingdom of Egypt and the Seleucid kingdom of Syria. All right. So that's Syria's north of Israel. Egypt is south of Israel. Okay? They're both natured, uh, they're both Greek in nature, but they're warring between themselves. All right, so during most of the time, the Jews uh, in Judea were under the benevolent rule of the Ptolemies. In other words, the Ptolemies of Egypt were tolerant and allowed them uh, to, to practice basically uh, what they wanted to. In other words, they, they would be able to perform and practice their faith in God, their sacrifices, their temple worship, those kinds of things. However, though, the Seleucid ruler, Antiochus Epiphanes, brought Egypt under his control. This is covered in verses 21 through 28. Now, when they came under Antiochus's rule, he really came under the cruel rule. In other words, he was vicious against the Jews. When he returned from Egypt, he attacked Jerusalem. He killed over 80,000 Jews. He took 40,000 Jews to be personal slaves and took another 40,000 and sold them into slavery and made profit from them. Okay? This is described, uh, and, and on top of that, he desecrated the temple. Yes. Okay? yes. All right, so uh, this is all covered in verses 29 through 35. What chapter? Chapter 11. Okay. Now, there are four eras of Jewish history between the captivity when the Jews were taken into Babylon and the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. So four periods or four eras of history between that. The first one is the Persian era between 530 and 332 BC when Judah was a Persian province uh, and those, those Persians were very tolerant. Cyrus let them go home. He let them rebuild their temple. He let them rebuild their city. Uh, they were, and it, Basically, he allowed them to govern themselves and to practice their faith. Now, the Greek era from 331 to 167 BC is when the Jews in Judea were ruled by Alexander the Great and his successors, the Ptolemies, who were residing basically in Egypt. Now, under the Ptolemies, the Jews enjoyed peace and security. Okay? But in 167 BC, they came under the tyranny of the Seleucid kingdom to the north, the Syrian kingdom, and specifically under the tyranny of Antiochus Epiphanes. The third era uh, of the Jewish in, was really their Jewish independence, and that ruled from 167 uh, BC to 63 BC. So for about 104 years, we see that there was peace because the, the Maccabees, uh, Judas Maccabeus, the priest, and his sons and others loyal to them, rebelled against Antiochus Epiphanes, and we see that they opposed the rulers uh, until uh, in 142 BC, the Jews gained their independence. Now, the final era of, Ro of Jewish history between uh, the captivity and the birth of Christ, obviously, is the Roman era. And that's mm -hmm. when the Jews came under Roman authority and Roman rule in 63 uh, BC. Now, in Daniel chapter 11, verse 36 to chapter 4, uh, 12, verse 4, we see that it talks about the faithful will be outstanding. Now, Bible scholars have varying opinions about the correct interpretation of these verses. 
some think that these verses are talking specifically to that time frame only of Antiochus Epiphanes, who very cruelly persecuted the Jews. But others speculate that this is a prophecy not about Antiochus Epiphanes, uh, the Syrian ruler, the uh, Seleucid ruler, but that it's a prophecy about the Muslims and how they take possession of the Holy Land, which meaning the land of Israel, in the 7th century A.D. during the Christian era. Now, we know that when the Muslims conquered uh, Palestine, took over the former land of Israel, they pretty much blotted out Christianity in all of Southwest Asia, North Africa, and the Middle East. Now, among evangelical Christians, most popular opinion is that these verses are referring neither to one of those other options, but that it is a futuristic reference to the Antichrist, uh, and he is the arch enemy of Christ, and he's the arch enemy of the church uh, at the end of the age. Now, if we assume that it's the evangelical opinion is correct, then it concludes yet in verse 45 with very encouraging words. Notice what it says in chapter 11, verse 45. He will stop between the glorious mountain and the sea and will pitch his royal tents. But while he is there, his time will suddenly run out and no one will help him. In the King James, uh, it, it, it basically says, and yet he shall come to his end and no one will help him. What is this saying? This is saying that the Antichrist, like all the enemies of God, all yes. the enemies of Christ, yes. are doomed to defeat and they're doomed to everlasting condemnation. Christ and his church, his kingdom, the church, will be victorious over all the forces of evil, and there will be no end to our Savior's kingdom. Now, if you look at the first four verses of Daniel chapter 12, it says, and it deals with a time of trouble for the Jews, such as, as there was never since there was in a nation. During this time, in these four verses, we see Michael, the guardian angel of the mm -hmm. Jews, will stand in their defense. Mm -hmm. So this is predictive from Daniel's perspective. And during this time, we're going to see that the archangel Gabriel is the guardian angel of the Jews. We mentioned this a couple weeks ago. And that he's going to come and stand in their defense. And it says that they shall be delivered. Okay. Verse 2 says that there will be a resurrection of the dead. Look at verse 2. Mm -hmm. Many of those whose bodies lie dead and buried will rise up, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting disgrace. Also, in verse 3, it says those who are wise, in other words, the wise meaning those who love God, right. and those who live for God, shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. The New Living Translation says, those who are wise will shine as bright as the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. In Daniel chapter 12, verses 5 through 13, we see the time of the end, the end times talked about briefly. In verses 5 through 10, we see that God's redemptive purpose is brought forth. So what is the point of all this? The point is, is that he's going to send his son to redeem the world. Daniel saw two men in this, in Daniel chapter 12, verse 5 through 10. He saw two men one standing on each side of the Tigris River. Mm -hmm. One of them asked a man dressed in linen, the one that was hovering above the waters, that first man that was hovering above the waters, when these events would take place. The man in the, in, that's hovering above the waters dressed in linen says it shall be for a time, times, and a half a time. Now, I'm going to share a thought with you that maybe is a little different than what you think. Most scholars interpret this as a meaning of the three and a half years, and they see it as referring to the second half of the tribulation period. But I want you to think about something. What is the number seven? God's perfect number. God's perfect number, right? So it signifies what? 
Perfection, completion, Com right? Yes. Okay. What's three and a half? Half of that. Half of that number. Okay. So it can also then mean that something three and a half of seven can mean that something is determined, but it's determined for an indefinite time period. In other words, Daniel uh, didn't really understand what it meant. Some of us don't understand what it means. But what he was assured was is that God is working out his redemptive plan. Amen. Okay? And that in that plan in verse 9 he talks about, as a result, he says in verse 10, many shall be purified, made white, and refined. So tribulation causes refinement. Okay? Now, that three and a half, let's go back to that for a moment. It, it could be the three and a half years the second three and a half years of the tribulation, but it could also signify of an indefinite period of time. So we're not quite sure what that means. Daniel didn't understand it. To be honest with you, I don't know what it means. But here's what I do know, is that in verse 8 he says, I heard what was said, but I didn't understand what it meant. So I asked, how will this all finally end, my Lord? But in verse 9 he said, now, go now, Daniel, for what I have said is is kept secret and sealed until the time of the end. Many will be purified, cleansed, and refined by these trials. But the wicked will continue in their wickedness, and none of them will understand. Only those who are wise will know what it means. What did we just say wise meant? Those who love redeemed, and those who obey God. Yes. If you're redeemed, if you're in a right relationship Amen. with God, Amen. then we will know what that means. That means, I may not know it now, but that means that he'll reveal it to me. Even though God was showing Daniel the depth of this vision, yet in the end, God is still speaking to Daniel hope. Hope, restoration, comfort, and peace. Amen. 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 Now, notice though in verses, uh, the last three verses of the 12th chapter, from the time the daily sacrifice is stopped and the sacrilegious object that causes desecration is set up to be worshipped, there will be 1,290 days. And blessed are those who wait and remain until the end of the 1,335 days. As for you, go your way until the end. Now, this is the angel speaking to Daniel. You will rest. Then at the end of the days, you will rise again to receive the inheritance set aside for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The man dressed in linen continued to speak to Daniel in these verses. The words in verse 11 could possibly refer to the persecution of the Jews under Antiochus. It could definitely reference them. But it could also, in a broader sense, reference the history of the world and specifically the yes. times of the Antichrist. Yes. The persecution under Antiochus lasted 10 days longer than three years. Okay. In like manner, there's going to be a generally extended period at the end of the age, in other words, yet to come, yes. okay, that's going to match the same times of Antiochus. Wow. So just as he was cruel then, there's coming a time when it's going to be just as cruel, just yes. as matching. The times will yes. match the times of Antiochus. Yes. yes. Now, there is another view uh, that Daniel chapter 11, 12, verse 11, which talks about the sacrifice, the daily sacrifice stopped and sacrilegious object that causes desecration. There's another view that says that Daniel 12, 11, Matthew 24, verse 15, and Revelation chapters 11, 12, and 13 may refer to the seven years of the 70th week of Daniel's prophecy. Yes. Okay, which will come at the end of the age. Mm -hmm. So in this last age, we, here's what we take from this. God, again, deals with the Jewish people. There will yes. be a temple. There will be sacrifices. Yes. When the temple is again desecrated by the Antichrist and the abomination is set up, 
then we know that the end is very near. Yes. Very near. Yes. The man that's dressed in linen concluded his message to Daniel with the assurance that he would rest. In other words, you're going to die, but you're going to rest after his death. You're going to rest, and that you're going to be resurrected. You're going to be brought back to life in the end, and you're going to receive the inheritance at that time. Now, Daniel didn't understand all that was revealed to him about the future events. Christian preachers and teachers have come up with many different interpretive scenarios uh, of end time events. Mm -hmm. However, I, uh, I want to submit a, a thought to you. To inherit the promises of God, it is not essential that all the details of how all these prophecies about future events will come to pass. It's interesting, it's fun to study, it's fun to live. We're living it. We're watching. Amen. We're watching prophecy unfold before our eyes. Yes. Yes. But it's not essential to your salvation. What is essential is that we inherit the promises that we remain faithful to God. We have to be faithful Amen. to Him. If we're faithful, then we're going to receive His promises. Yes. And that verse we read to, those who are wise will know what it means. Amen. Amen. So... <clears throat> Titus chapter 2, verse 11 through 13 says this. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Amen. Titus wrote it for his age, yeah. but he also yeah. wrote it for our age and Correct. all those in between. Correct. Okay? What are we living? We're living righteously, soberly, uh, uh, and, and godly. Why? For what purpose? We're doing it so that we will see the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus hallelujah, Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There is a lot in the book of Daniel about the persecution of the Jews. That's what Daniel was overwhelmed by. Mm -hmm. His people mm -hmm. are going to suffer much. Mm -hmm. I think that's why he was overwhelmed. Amen. Not just because of the presence of the angel in front of him, but what, what he did understand. And all that God was showing him. Yeah. So this lesson provides a very excellent opportunity for us to pray for our Jewish brothers and sisters. Amen. Anti-Semitism, which is nothing more than hatred toward the Jews, right. is alive and well in our world That's today. Right. It's prevalent in many places. And so we, we should take this opportunity to pray for our Jewish brothers and sisters, to pray for Israel, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes, amen. The word today is historical in nature. In Daniel's day, it was predictive. In our day, we're looking back as if it, it, in fulfillment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Daniel didn't understand it, but we look back and just see it as completed history. It's history. It's something that's already happened. But yet, there's elements of this Amen. that have not yet been fulfilled. Correct. And we're living in those days where yes. we're watching that, it that. be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. Okay? And so, what is our what is our challenge to us today? Our challenge is to stay spiritually alert, to pray, to fast, yes. to mourn, Amen. Uh, not to be filled with self righteousness or uh, a pride of who we are. Uh, but that to humble ourselves and to pray for our leaders and to mm -hmm. pray for those uh, in leadership, to, the government officials, they're placed there by God. Yes. His word says so. And we ought to pray for them, not just criticize them or judge them, but we ought to pray for our leaders and to humbly submit ourselves before the Lord. We, that verse that talked about in chapter 10, we are to shine bright Hallelujah. as his people. Amen. So we encourage you to do that. Father, I pray that you would bless your people today. Yes, Lord. Father, Lord, help us to be uh, emissaries of light yes. and not of darkness. Mm. May, Father, Lord, we living mm. in perilous times today stand courageously for you. May we be encouraged, Father, Lord, as you uh, strengthen Daniel. May we be strengthened today by your yes. Holy Spirit. Father, Lord, as you gave him strength and you touched his lips, enabled him to speak, mm. touch our lips and allow us, Lord, to speak yes, and Lord. To share the testimony of, of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives and how it can touch the lives of others. we got people hurting and, 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 oh, and fearful, God. Lord, right now. Yes. And we pray, God, that we can speak life into their situation because Hallelujah, we speak Lord. Christ yes. into them. 
We pray, Father, Lord, for salvation, spiritual results. We pray, God, that you would bless our opportunities yes, to minister to others. We may be locked inside, not going out much. But, Lord, we are still able to communicate Hallelujah. with other people by phone, text, and yes, all the social media yes. platforms. So we can still communicate. And, Lord, help us to do that. Help us to be a light to our community. And we give you praise, and we thank you for what you're accomplishing in these days. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lord bless you.